welcome back we're gonna do another tutorial today today we're gonna tackle a beer mug and on the beer mug we are gonna engrave a dire wolf from the HBO show Game of Thrones um, you might have heard of Game of Thrones by this time it's a very popular show with lots of fans of both the books and the show so let's get started as you can see, I have already traced on the beer mug my direwolf with a fine point sharpie. And the first step on the actual engraving is I am engraving the outlines of the direwolf with a small spherical diamond tipped burr, my flex shaft, Dremel attachment, going at a high speed, and I'm going all over the outlines of the wolf first with this spherical tool. The white background that you see, the paper itself doesn't have the outlines. You can watch some of my other videos. I actually take the printout, then I trace it with a fine point sharpie on the glass, but that white background was just so that I could see the sharpie outlines clearly. Okay, so as you can see, I already went through all of it with this small spherical diamond tip burr. I'm going to go ahead and get the teeth with the same, the same tip. And so there's the outline. This next tool that I have here, or this next tip, is the Arkansas stone it's like a medium sized almost like a teardrop shape it's round at the end but I'm gonna go through and almost I guess I'm gonna say color in the inside of these um, they're almost like scales or they look like scales on the on the dire wolf. I mean, it's really hair, but the end result is going to seem like a, a scale. So I'm going to go ahead and color all of these in. Near the bottom of these, I'm going to keep calling them scales. Near, near the bottom of these scales, I'm going to leave a little bit without any sort of engraving to leave them dark that's just so that I can differentiate between where one scale begins and one ends so as you can see I'm not just going straight through all of it I'm leaving a little bit of uh, almost like a little tiny line where I didn't engrave anything in between those contours of the scales um, and then I'm gonna do the same color in the head of the dire wolf you don't really want to go back and forth on the head of the wolf without thinking about it you want to follow the outlines of the wolf as if you're following a real wolf's head. So I'm not just going back and forth, you know, left to right, coloring without purpose or engraving without purpose. I'm following the outlines that are of the wolf. And that just helps because. You'll see later, once I zoom in at the very end, the wolf has hair. And so if you follow the outline of the head, it just looks a hell of a lot better when you follow the outlines than if you were just to go back and forth, back and forth, left to right, without following the outlines that you had already made. You can sort of see the difference that it makes. If I were to just go straight across, it just would not look realistic. What I'm doing 
doing here is I am going outside of the wolf because the wolf I want it to pop out so I'm leaving a contour around the wolf's head and then I'm gonna contour the whole thing around it just to make it pop out a little bit that one that I used around around the wolf near the wolf was a, a sharp tip Arkansas stone and now I'm back here with the teardrop shape it's a little bit bigger so you can cover a lot more area with it you could take it further out or you could just do a little bit of a of an outline it's up to you what I'm doing here is I'm using a technique that I kind of thought up about during this engraving. Basically, I took my sharp point, sharpie, and I made the lines on the scales because that's how I'm going to differentiate where I'm going to shade and where I'm not. What I'm using here is a pencil. So you can use this technique if you kind of have a hard time with shading. You can go through and shade the parts of your engraving and see how it's going to look before you actually go and do the actual um, shading and buffing with your with your bit. So basically it's just a regular number two pencil. I'm going through, turn the light on so you can see a little bit better, but I'm using the lead in the pencil to go ahead and mimic what I'm going to do later with the buffing, the, the buffer uh, tip. So basically I'm putting on here where I am going to do the shading with the next bit that comes up. And of course all of this you can wash off and at any time and you're actually going to take this off anyway with the bits that you're going to use when you go through them with the buffer. So it's almost like a preview I guess you could say of what it's gonna look like at the end once you go through with the with the with the fine buffer Dremel tip so now I'm back and I'm gonna go ahead and use this wheel burr to go through all the spots that I already just previewed with the pencil I'm gonna go ahead and make those darker so again I've shown this part a little bit before in one of my other videos the flower flower vase video you can check that out but basically what you're doing is you went through with the diamond tip burr those are gonna be really light uh, really stand out and light the next one is the Arkansas stone white stone and then this is gonna be your dark areas you just go through what you already did and you're gonna make them darker and darker by going through and actually buffing out so that more light gets through and that's how you get your shading in any of these steps you just take your time come back to it I mean it is a hobby so you do it for fun you don't ever wanna get tired of it by doing so much at a time I mean it's really up to you so as you can see I'm just going through and I'm darkening all the spots that I already previewed with my pencil now I'm gonna go back with fine tipped Arkansas and I'm gonna make the lighter parts lighter so go through those again because sometimes using that other wheel you kind of buff out some of the parts that you wanted to leave light so go back through make them light again this part depending on how much you want it to stand out if you want it to stand out even more you know just make make it deeper go through and take out more and more glass so that they stand out even more but you do want different grades of gray so that it doesn't all look the same otherwise you know it would just 
look two dimensional. So you can start seeing what that looks like. Up next is the motto at the bottom of the mug. So in this part, we're gonna go ahead and stick with the fine point Arkansas because the lettering, the lettering is really thin. So I'm gonna use that fine tip and I'm gonna go through and first I like to go through the straight lines because those are easier. So you go through, get all the straight lines first and then you make the pass with the curved ones. You wanna take your time in this process here. Lettering uh, by hand unless you're just naturally good at it or you've had practice it's pretty hard personally I have a hard time with lettering making it come out straight but this is the end result of the project as you can see different kinds of shade different things pop out and then the lettering at the bottom so for anyone that wants to try this on a beer mug, any uh, Game of Thrones fans, you can go ahead and try this. I believe this took me about two hours from beginning to end. And it looks awesome with beer in it. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share. See you later.